Yeah. I'm Dave, we're at Gentleman's Rose Club and we are cutting Sam's hair today. What are we doing, mate? Skin fade, yeah. like, relatively high to here. Now I have quite a lot of length taken off and I'm just gonna Yeah, I remember last time, we, we did it last time, yeah? So you, you went from that kind of like, yeah. Uh, pull back kind of quiffed look yeah. to a messy kind of chop. Yeah, quite a thing. Yeah? Yeah, it's sweet. Yeah, he's done a nice job though. The top looks really textured and nice. It's yeah. growing up quite nice. So you want to go a little bit shorter than that on top? Yeah. Okay, we've got these new clips today, which I found at a barber show. And they're good for just getting that out of the way. They're yeah, just Velcro. So you just literally push them on and it just clips that fringe out of the way so you've got a clear kind of canvas to fade on. So we've got magic clips. I prefer the magic clip fading. I've done both now, senior and the magic clip and the magic clip seems to be better for fading. We're going to start at the back here and we're going to put our first guideline in. So we're going to find the occipital bone around there. I'm going to drop a little, little line and we've got that just set off the zero so that it doesn't imprint into the head. And we're working around. What we're going to do now is that's slightly, the blade is slightly off for zero. I'm going to remove all the bulk. Okay, now we're going to drop that down to a proper zero so it's properly clear. So that's a true zero. We're going to be taking it up from there, but not all the way to the top of the line. And we're flicking out as well. So what we want to do from this point is we're checking the balance, check that the lines smooth all the way around. Looks the right height. So we've got detailer, zero gapped, which can be flicking out the very bottom of that. Oh my god, this shot here, right? Yeah. You guys had like that look at Charlie in the background. <laughs> <laughs> It's the same haircut, mate. I know. That's f***ing brilliant. You've literally got the same haircut above the same again, haircut. Skin fade nation, mate. So, we're going to work out just the baseline now with the foil. We're going to take it up to about there. <coughs> and we're going to take it round. Leaving the same distance between that line and the zero all the way around. Okay, and we're going to take out a little bit lower now on the zero. We're going down to foils anyway, but the foils, because the foils will pull the hair and it breaks if it's too long and it breaks my foil, yeah. So if I go that little bit, just that little bit lower, it makes a big difference on the, on the foil finish. And the reason I've done it like this, is so that I can chip away into that with the, with the, zero, with the zero on this and then blend it with a foil. So that's just something that I started doing recently after a guy called Noah showed me how to do it. 
Noah Bluestones108 on Instagram. He cut my hair recently, showed me that he was doing zeros a little bit different. I think we've got a bit of a problem at the moment in the industry that there's loads of barber shops, but not many barbers. Okay, so the plan now is to grab the foil head for the Andis. These are good for just removing the bulk. They don't, they don't mess about, mate. Smooth, yeah, go on. Rub your chin on that, mate. Like that. Yeah, I've started using these recently. Uh, those Andis just aren't cutting it for me anymore. I don't know why that is. They just don't seem to be performing. Yeah, I might need just new Andis, just new foils on it or something. So as I get towards that line, I'm starting to go down and not up. So I'm leaving it slightly longer towards that. Now we're going to blend that to that. And we're going to start with uh, an open blade, so a zero blade on the foil. This is a very long-winded way to do a fade, but it's very smooth, so the result should be like perfect. Okay, you can see we're working that line out just with the detailer. And we're just going to drop in just downwards on the very edge of that line. Okay, so we have worked out to a zero. That is faded. Okay, so now we're going to grab a number two with the guard. And we're going to take out about an inch and three quarters above that line, all the way around the head. Right, so we've got a number one now, and the number one is closed as well. And we're going to put in a second guideline around an inch. So we've got, a, we've got a one through there, a two through here, and a zero through here. So we've got to blend the one to the two and the zero to the one. So the next thing to do is grab a 0.5 guard. And I'm going to work down on that line. First of all, I'm going to put it into a 0.75 position. So it's, it's half closed. And I'm going to start working away on that line there. Blending the zero to the one. So we're going to half close that to a 0.25 position. It's blended there, I can see a little bit of weight here. And it starts from here and it goes about goes from about there around the head. So I'm just going to work that out. Right, I'm going to drop it down now to just off the zero. And this is just going to be for refining. So you're not going to be going back into that phase. You're just going to take out any little imperfections. Put your line around. See a little bit of weight there. And I can see something there. So. I'm going to pick at that instead with the corner of this detailer and just break up that little bit of weight. So we've got one on the half guard. I'm going to put that in a 1.75 position. And we're going to go just slightly higher than that one and we're going to flick out. Okay, so we're just going to comb it through. We've wet the hair as well. So I'm going to comb the crown how it should normally sit. That'll help me cut it in the direction. 
and it's going to be a messy kind of crop. So we're going to be looking for texturizing methods after. So we're going to take the top back section, we're going to be working forward. And we're going to go shorter at the back, longer towards the front. So just going to castle cut the top. And you're using that back section as a guide. So you're pulling up a section of it with your current section. And they should be angling towards the front. So you want to leave that front a lot longer than the back, really, so that you get that kind of quiffy, choppy look. Otherwise, if you go too short on the front, it looks, looks too severe. So now we're going to work the sides. We're going to come forward again. And we're going to pull from, we're going to start at the crown and we're going to pull around. So the direction of the crown at the moment is, if you look there, we've got it combed out how it's lying. So we're going to work that way and this way. So palm to face. And we're just working our way now all the way around, keeping our hand, keeping our hand in the same position all the way around the head, and that creates a nice even shape. Okay, so we haven't, I haven't cut that bit short there because I need that to give the front body. If you cut that too short there, you lose that nice uh, solid look through the hair. Right now we're just left with that fringe before we blend it. So do you want to go a bit short on the fringe? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah? So if you lean slightly back to me, I'm going to take the middle of the fringe and I'm going to castle cut. So that I get a nice choppy effect on it. That's a nice deep. Okay, so we've still got some blending to do on the sides, so that's not quite what it's going to look like. You're going to lose a little bit of hair off there and etc. But we are going to texture the top now. So it also helps as well on this kind of cut if you just pull up and just check that everything's okay. So it, although it should be even all the way across, there's parts that you leave longer. So I've left this longer here. So if I cut that short, the same as the other side, I'd have more of a quiff. I want this to come round, I want to keep that length there so that it supports that. Right, so we're going to texture up now. We're going to just pull sections of the hair, and we're going to twist it, and we're going to just partially cut the top of that, closing the scissor ever so slightly. This is going to give a textured appearance to the hair. So I, may, I may take a little bit more off that once I've blended it, okay? So don't judge it yet. So we're going to just blend the side so it's nice and flat. I'm looking in the mirror to see that I've got a nice flush line through that side. I don't want it to go in and then come back out at the top. So I'm looking for that kind of transition there. Key to blending with seven inches as well is you keep one blade still. So the bottom blade always stays still and you're only moving the top. That way you get a smoother. It's better than doing that. And I can see that I've got to take a little bit of this out. Just because it's not fitting the rest of the hairline. That's not So I'm keeping the same direction. I know that that's going to go up, you see. So I'm only looking to clear that bit of hair. And it's just made that a little bit less severe. We're going to start it with some tea tree salt spray.
And we're going to dry that in. So we're going to work from the back. On a medium heat, we're just going to dry that in. And we're getting that quiff to lift. So we're pulling it up and we're blow drying the base of the hair. How's it feeling, man? Good. Nice lamp, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So the key to this when you're styling it is you make the back a little bit lower. Yeah. And then pull the front up. Oh. Happy? Yeah, Beardbrand is a premium men's grooming company with products not only for your beard, but also your hair and body. Do yourself a favor and head over to beardbrand.com and take care of yourself. Or you can stick around and watch a few more of our awesome videos.